Okay. I may have messed up and did it. Y'all, hold on. She said I messed up. I may have messed up and did it. Let's see. So it's going to be on YouTube too. Oh, I did that. Y'all better quit playing with me. I did it. I don't know why you acting surprised. You know, when you do it on YouTube, you do it. So they're going to be able to see it on YouTube. Uh, Rosika. We're on here. I don't know why you acting surprised. You know, <laughs> look, I, I don't you know, know what. Know it. It on YouTube, I'm actually gonna take it off. No, leave it on YouTube because some people were saying they couldn't see it uh, last month because it was on Zoom. I'm actually gonna take it off. Oh, no, leave it on YouTube. Some people couldn't see it last week. Last month. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gonna take it off. No, leave it on YouTube. Some people couldn't see it last month. I actually don't know how to stop it. Oh, okay. Oh. Well. <laughs> um, look at that. Let me see. Oh, y'all. <laughs> That's because okay. it's not supposed to be stopped. Be stopped well, right? well I, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing I'm hearing a loop, and I don't know if it's looping on the live stream or not. It's like I hear y'all, and then I hear us again. Double signal. Yes, it's like it's, it's double so I didn't I didn't want that to be a distraction for people who are watching. I don't hear it though. So yeah, I don't hear okay. it now either. Well, we're we going to wing it, and, and I'll play it back tonight. Those who hear, <laughs> we'll hear. We're ready, Nadine, whenever you okay. are. All right, all right. First, thanks, everyone, for, for joining us tonight. And, of course, we want to start with prayer. So does anyone have any prayer requests? Yes, I have a prayer request. This is the Frederick. Um, okay. My sister, she's supposed to be on here, but I don't see her on now. She's going to have a procedure Thursday morning, so keep her in prayer. Okay. Catherine Manning. Okay. She, she said she was going to get on, but I don't see her on, so she's having a procedure Thursday morning, so okay. keep her in prayer. All right. Anyone else? Okay. All right, let's go to Father in prayer. Uh, Lord, thank you, first of all, for allowing us to, to make it through this day, for, for letting us open our eyes and go about our days to travel safely to and from our destinations. We thank you so much for those who are able to um, join us in the Zoom platform as well as online uh, for taking time out of their schedule to spend some time um, in your word and talking about um, your word. Um, we ask that you please be with um, Catherine Nannan who will be having a procedure on Thursday. We ask that you please be with her medical staff, um, with the physicians who will be um, administering care to her. We especially ask that you give her a spirit of calmness, of confidence, um, that you are always in control and just to allow you to do what only you can do because you are truly able. We ask that you be all with all of those who are on uh, tonight um, and that you give them what they stand in need of, as you know, um, no one else does. Um, just please be with them physically, mentally, and spiritually. Please be with us as we go through this, through this lesson that we all open our ears and hearts so we can learn something new to help us in our Christian walk. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 All right. So, how many of you are already familiar with our have heard of this book. It's called Women of the Word by Jen Wilkin. Women of, Women of the Word by Jen Wilkin, How to Study the Bible with Both Our Hearts and Our Minds. So this year, this, this is the, the book that we're using to help facilitate our studies of uh, this year in 2024, our our goal as a church is to grow more, um, to grow more individually, but also collectively. So the first thing I want to do just to kind of get a little feedback from you guys. Um, 
Does anyone willing to share kind of what's your typical approach when you're studying the Bible? Let's say if you're if you're having quiet time or if there's, you know, just a specific thing that you're studying, what's your typical approach? So a few of the things you typically would do to prepare and to execute that study. Okay, well, Keila. Our, okay. um, for me, when I'm, um, my approach is, uh, my, my area is, is quiet and um, I'm asking God to go in prayer first and just asking God to, you know, remove all distractions, you know, from my mind. And I ask that as I study that, um, I don't point fingers. I, you know, um, I just ask God to deal with me mm -hmm. in the moment of my study. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and wanting to grow and wanting to fix me, you know, just, I've, I've just learned, you know, the importance of asking God for that help because, it's easy to get distracted when I'm, you know, studying. I don't know if anybody else, that has, it, it's easy to get, you know, being a wife, being a mother, working, it's easy to get distracted. And so, mm -hmm. I, that's, that's always my prayer. That's always, for a while now, been my prayer that I don't know, please remove all distractions, help me to stay focused, and just deal with Keila and let me allow you to deal with me. Yes. Thank you for that. I told, I agree with that. And um, I think a lot of times, at least I know for me, I'll get distracted and um, sometimes forget to pray because I'm just so focused on, okay, I want to do it. You know, I've set aside this time and, and I don't want to fail and I want to do this. But I, I really appreciate you mentioning, you know, starting off with prayer. Um, Roshika, did you have anything you wanted to interject? Okay. She kind of covered. Okay. All right. Anyone else have any, the, the question on the floor for those who may have just joined was, you know, how do you approach your Bible study with one or two things that you typically do when you are approaching your Bible study? Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play a video um, which is actually a part of the Women of the Word series. Um, and I just really thought it was very thought provoking. And um, I recognized myself in it. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, maybe this is something I should share just in case. Uh, so we're going to give this a shot. It's not playing the audio, Nadine. What was that, Rashika? It's not playing the audio. I think you may have to reset the sound. Okay. My mistake. I apologize. No problem. Is it working? There you go. Yes, there we go. Do you follow any kind of study guide or anything? Now, no, 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 just bounce around, bibbidi bobbidi, see what I find. Okay, um, well, I'm looking for some recommendations. Have you ever studied Obadiah? What? No. no, no, no. Okay, uh, Titus or second. <laughs> First King. Gabriel. Malachi. Mm -hmm. Leviticus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what would you recommend? Like the New Testament? Let me break it down. 
If there's a juicy storyline, I'm going to read it. If there's a guy named Paul who wrote it, I'm going to read it. Otherwise, I'm out. Okay, so Genesis? Yes. Song. Straight up. Uh, what about Proverbs? No. Proverbs 31. Huh? Yeah, duh. <laughs> So, was everyone able to hear and see that? Hopefully so. Um, what I what I really appreciated about that was just how candid it was, um, and just very down to earth. Um, I, I know for myself, there are so many stories um, that I probably could name. And for me, I know when I'm going through something difficult, I usually go to Job. Right? Um, does anyone else? have a particular passage that they tend to go to if they're facing a particular struggle or a situation in their life. I, in all honesty, I'll go to the version app and mm -hmm. I'll type in a topic uh, depending on whatever mood I'm in or mm -hmm. whatever situation, whatever season of life I'm in. And I'll try to find something that will minister me, minister to me in that area, right. um, whatever that is. And, the, you know, with the convenience of technology, I don't have to know that it's in Hosea or Malachi, something I don't know really mm -hmm. <laughs> right. on a regular or that's taught regularly from the pulpit. But if it's in there, you version is going to lead me there. You'll find it there. Right. Yeah. And then they have the little lesson plans, too. Like right. The yeah, the topical plans. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I forgot about those. So, um, so the premise of her book, of Miss Wilkins' book, is she recognized over time. Um, she recognized that she'd been in seven different denominations through her life, right? And she found it was peculiar two things that even though everyone was reading the same Bible, everyone was coming to different conclusions. Hence the seven different denominations that she had been a member of. And she even brought up the fact that there was one um, uh, faith, I won't name it, but there was one faith that her mother-in-law was a member of. And that faith did not believe in people going to hospitals or seeing doctors. And she was so alarmed because she recognized that her loved one took the word of someone else's interpretation of what was in the Bible. And it was not only having a spiritual um, detrimental effect, but it was also affecting them physically, their actual body with an, an illness because they would not seek care because word, the word was not properly interpreted or divided or um, conveyed. So that was one of her reasons. Another one of her reasons was that she felt like in her um, in her local congregation, she noticed that a lot of the times when there would be conversations about in ladies' classes or just in general throughout the general congregation, typically it would be topical, like maybe on love or faith or anger. The, the scriptures that would be discussed would typically relate to a specific topic, right? Or... Um, they would relate to, um, you know, just uh, either it was something that was topical or devotional. So it was either it was topical or devotional. And she found that it was just so lacking to go beyond that level. And she felt that as an English graduate, she had an English has an English degree. She found that it was weird that with it being the Bible, the Bible is our roadmap right, from, from earth to heaven, ideally, right? But it's also a book. And she found that as an English major, having completed her degree, she was like, why aren't we studying the Bible the way we would typically study a regular book? Why are we cherry picking topics or only going for devotional? Why are we doing that? 
when it is a complete book that was given to us by the inspiration of God through the Holy Spirit. So this was her motivation for writing this book because she wanted to help women, all people, but specifically women in this instance, to help us learn how to delve beyond devotional or topical Bible study. Now, for some of um, from, for some of us who've been in the church for a long time, you may remember hearing the term hermeneutics, right? Um, I know growing up, they used to have hermeneutics class, um, and that was basically teaching you how to study the Bible. At our congregation, Brother Glenn and, uh, and the brothers, they've done classes on how to study the Bible, and typically it's referred to as hermeneutics. And that's the breaking down, the what, when, who, where, how, the context of anything that you are reading in the Bible and understanding that so you can get a, a proper application, understanding an application of that text to your life. Um, so these are things that were, were her motivation for even writing this book. And uh, I'm only addressing chapter one um, of the book. Um, Overall, she believes that women have a special insight into the Bible, and we should use our gifts and abilities to analyze and understand it. And so the book is to, um, divided into three parts. The first part is foundations, which chapter one falls under foundations. Um, we'll continue to go each month through each chapter, which will delve deeper into the details of how to execute the proper, um, proper Bible study. So I want to ask this, um, how many of you, if you're able to type in the chat, how many of you have a hobby that you enjoy, a hobby or two even, that you enjoy doing? Just type whatever that hobby is into the chat. That's right, mine. Uh, um, team. Oh, cool. Horseback riding. Ooh, pawn and ooh, I want to learn to do that. Painting figure. Okay. Mine is painting figurines. Dancing. Okay. All right. So. When you first started doing these things, right? <laughs> when you first started learning these hobbies, um, how would you rate yourself? Like, do you think like you were a natural or did it take a little time for you to learn those skills or that hobby? And now, oh, I should have known she, I, I know <laughs> okay, listening to music. Okay, okay. And when you first start a hobby, right, you have something just ignites you and pulls you in, right? Um, but as you continue to, to get in a little bit more and you learn more and you spend more time with it and you learn more, one of two things happen. Either you figure out, yeah, I'm really good at this. I really like it. I'm going to keep doing it. Or you figure out, oh, not what I expected it to be. I'm going to have to put in some more work into this for me to be really good at it. And maybe you decide to hang in with it. So much like in a hobby, when we're looking at the Bible, the book, God's word, what Ms. Wilkin is telling us is that we need to recognize that it's the same process. Much like if you are married, and you meet your spouse and you're interested and you court and you decide to get married and the love that you have for your spouse the first year is not the same love that you may have for your spouse at 10 years. Why? Because you decided we are going to be married. We're going to stick together through thick and thin. We're going to figure it out. We're going to make it work. We're going to do it. So you are per just perpetually, constantly putting in the work to get a desired result. So when we look at the Bible, the approach needs to be the same. 
it's not as effective to take the Bible and say, okay, well, today, let's see, wherever it falls is what I'm going to read. All right, that's the men of Bethel and I too heard. It has to be intentional, is what she's saying. It needs to be beyond a scripture, your favorite scripture or your favorite story. And one of the things that she recommended was, or that she practices, um, it's called inductive um, study. And basically, if let's say, um, I don't know, say say Psalms 31, right? Everyone knows Psalms 31, pretty much. Um, the Psalms 23, Proverbs 31. Almost automatically, you're like, oh, okay, I know that. But what, what about the rest of the book, the Proverbs? What about the rest of the book of Psalms? Why are we limiting ourselves and restricting ourselves from the power, from the knowledge of God? Because the Bible is a book about God, about Christ, about the Holy Spirit. And if we cherry pick and we limit ourselves, we're not helping. Not only are we're not helping ourselves, we're not helping those around us. OK, um, one of the other things that she mentioned was when we are, um, you know, say when we when we're in Bible class or we're meeting together, we have a Bible study. As women, we're emotional beings, right? We're always told we're so emotional, we're so emotional. And I, I think we're not the only ones who are emotional. OK, first of all, but um, one of the things she was explaining was that when we're in Bible class, and let's say someone is telling you, okay, Psalms chapter 23, verse one, and they tell you, okay, and this is what they think it means, right? They tell you what they think, and more than more than likely, if we, us, um, we take on the same thought, we're like, okay, well, yeah, I agree with that. So, She's explaining to us that we typically in an environment where people are telling us what to think about a verse. And from there, that's the passive part of it. And then from there, we decide how we feel about that verse. So it might be a verse that you find that helps you, that helps to restore you, that gives you confidence, that gives you peace. And you say, okay, I really like that verse. I, th I think I'm going to use that as one of my anchor verses. Her challenge to us is we need to flip it. We need to not focus so much on putting feeling first. We need to be thinking first. In order to think, we need to be in the word. We need to be developing skills and tools so that when we're in God's word, we're able to dissect it, we're able to read it, we're able to process it in a way that helps us to think, to function um, you know, in our daily lives. And then from there, you go to the, the feeling, how you feel, because that affects your feelings. Um, one of the things that she uh, pointed out that I really I like was, um, she explained that <laughs> she explained that the Bible is a book about God. Um, you know, as we said before, if you're upset about something or if you're struggling with health issues or if you're struggling with bereavement or um, or courage or if you're dealing with an enemy, um, if I'm dealing with an enemy, I was in Psalms. I was with David. I was like, yeah, get him, God. That, that's where I was, okay? Um, but what she explained is that most of the time when we go to the Bible, we're going there to get something for us. We're going there with a me um, state of mind, with a me attitude. I need something from you, God. I'm going to the Bible to get what I need. It's about me, okay? And that becomes kind of like, even though, he wants to be there for us, even though he placed it there for us, right? So we can learn, but it's not just about us. The Bible is for 
all of us, not just for you, not just for me, when we're going through a situation. The Bible is not life support. It's not. It can lead us to salvation, but we're not we're not supposed to use the Bible like it's just life support. When I need it, oh, let me grab it real quick. All right, yeah, let me read this verse. Okay, oh, I feel better. I'm going back to my life. No, the Bible is for all of us and ideally is to help bring others to God, to Christ, to salvation, to help them to know God so that they can accept Christ and have redemption. So she pointed out as an example of this, of this me mentality is, you know, do you guys remember when um, God told Moses that he wanted him to go back to Egypt, you know, to free, uh, to free the Israelites. So Moses had all these complaints. He was telling them what he couldn't do. I can't this and I don't speak well. And, you know, people, they want to kill me. And he had this whole list of excuses about why he couldn't do what God wanted him to do. And in God's response, he did not even address that. He just kept telling Moses, I am, I'll be your voice. I am, I've got it under control. I am. And that's part of what God wants us to learn when we're studying is that take the focus off me, 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 me. It, the book, it's about him. Every single book in the Bible is about God. In some iteration, whether it's God the Father, God the Son, or the Holy Spirit, it's God. So her challenge to us is to get out of our feelings and to put on our thinking cap. The same cap we might put on if we're working on a hobby or we're working on our marriage, or even if like if you're in college and you're you're studying, I don't know, calculus. <laughs> You don't pick up your calculus book and go, okay, well, I'm just going to, all right. Yeah, this works. All right. I'm ready to take my test. No, you're going to spend time in that book. You're going to drill. You're going to read a chapter one, two, three times if you need to, if you actually want, you know, a passing grade. But it takes the same application. And so her book reminds us that we need to treat the Bible as a book, which it is, and develop what she calls our Bible literacy. And to, what that means is not just cherry picking by topic or for devotion, but actually spending time in a chapter, on a chapter until you get to a point where you truly understand what that chapter is saying about God. What is Genesis saying about God? What is, I don't know, Philippians saying about God? What is Revelation saying about God? It takes time and it takes repetition. And in this world where we're so used to instant gratification, that's not gonna work with the Bible if you're truly pursuing spiritual growth. It's, it's, it's not a um, instant gratification, sticking in the microwave, boom, you got it. That's not how God works. And sometimes we need to take an intention, intentional, deliberate path, not a sprint, but a marathon and spend time in God's word so that he can reveal to us what we need to know about him. And once we have that developed understanding of him, then we're equipped and we feel more comfortable talking to others about God, about Christ, about the Holy Spirit, because we've taken the time to learn how to read the Bible, not just with our hearts, but with our minds. Um, that is all I have for you tonight. Do we have anyone with any questions or comments?
Okay, so one of the things, um, something I just want to share with you real quick before I um, put in this PDF. Um, something else that she that she requires of us is to be um, is to study with humility, um, to have a teachable spirit, to um, let the Bible challenge our preconceived notions, to be aware of our biases, and be willing to ask for help. Those are some of the, the key takeaways um, from, from the chapter. And so what I wanted to do for those who are interested in continuing your Bible study is I am placing into the chat a PDF uh, of a study guide that accompanies the book. And it has, a, you know, just different series of, of thought-provoking questions and exercises. Um, so if you're able to download it from Zoom, great. If not, just let me know. Send an email to, excuse me, to Nadine Nunnery at Yahoo, and I will email it to you. But I wanted to kind of include that tool in case someone wanted to, you know, extend their study um, of this particular topic. So, all right. I did have a question. The, yes, the, the tips that were suggested at the end, did she elaborate on that? Because you can interpret that um, right, yeah. in different yeah. ways. Right. Yeah. So for the, the come, come to the Bible with a teachable spirit, it means that you're willing to learn from the Bible, even if it means you, that you have to change your mind. Because some of us, when we come from a particular background, like I know, like my whole life I've been Church of Christ, but my mom was raised Baptist. Her dad was a reverend. Mm -hmm. So she came with a whole different set of, yeah. um, you yeah. know, completely different. And she brought that with her, kind of like baggage, you know, like you bring into a relationship, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you have to have a teachable spirit and you have to be willing to let the Bible mm -hmm. change your mind. Um, and depending on how stubborn we are or how how deeply rooted that hurt may be, it may take the Holy Spirit. God may have to use the Holy Spirit to help you mm -hmm. through that process, right? All right. And then uh, the second one was be willing to let the, bi the Bible challenge our preconceived notions, which was very similar to the first. Um, we should not come to the Bible with a set of predetermined answers, Instead, we should be willing to let the Bible speak for itself. And the third is be aware of your own biases. Again, very similar to what you're bringing into um, your study from your um, life experiences. We all have biases which can affect our interpretation of the Bible. It is important to be aware of our own biases so they cannot, so we can avoid letting them cloud our judgment. The fourth is be willing to ask for help. And, and that, that can be tough because sometimes you don't know who to ask. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're willing to ask. Um, if you're struggling to understand a passage of scripture, we should not be afraid to ask for help from a pastor, teacher, or other trusted Christian. Um, she reminds us that approaching the Bible with humility is essential for getting the most out of it. And when you come to the Bible with, with a humble heart, we are more likely to be open to what it has to say and are more likely to grow in our understanding of God and his ways. Um, yeah, and so that's that's on the takeaways. Okay. Yeah, yeah the last one hits home too, because sometimes we read the Bible with a, it said with a, the spirit of humility, and sometimes we go there. We come with emotion, and we're coming with. I need to know what God is going to do with this person. Person, mm -hmm. not me. <laughs> Just, yeah. Lord, help me celebrate early. How you finna tear this other person up for me in yeah. Jesus name? So it's really, um, the, I'm guilty of that in the, in the past. I've grown past that now, but I have been there. And Won't it, do it? it is right, because it is an immediate, um, <laughs> God hits you in the face like, 
boo, this is for you. This, this is for you. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be just something in the passage that's like, mm -mm. you thought you were gonna, you know, do this, but I have this for you, but I wouldn't have even received it if I wasn't willing to be mm -hmm. humble and go, ooh, we, mm -hmm. ooh, oh, you right, daddy, that, that this is about, <laughs> to get myself together. Mm -hmm. And pray for that individual and be gracious to that individual the way I want you to be gracious to me because I'm going to cut mm -hmm. up. So that last one is that that's a good one. You go in there with these preconceived notions, you know, or you have mm -hmm. the best of it. Sometimes you don't, you know, you, mm -hmm. I'm going to do Bible study and, you know, love, you know, God is great. And the, but sometimes you just that devil will be right here. So that last one, I, I really uh, um, with. And she encourages us to to go with an absence of pride as well. Yeah. Um, and I want to read. This was a um, where is it? There was what like you were saying. Sometimes you go and you're like you think it's about the other person. It's about you. Yeah. And, um, but I want. Yeah, here it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going through a thing with an up an employer, and. Um, Psalm 62 says, for God alone, my soul waits in silence from, from him comes salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my defense and my fortress. I shall not be greatly moved. Like I would literally be sitting there in the office and this guy would start and I'd be like, mm, mm, mm. I got something for you. Right, Damn. right. <laughs> Psalm 62 said, God is my defense, you know, and <laughs> Once I got past that point of sicking God on him, like I'm a sick God on you. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Amen. you know, it's not about him. It's about yeah. me Amen. being who God wants me to be. And Amen. not allowing that person to pull me out of that. Right. And through the years, Everybody else turned their backs on this guy. But in the end, it was him and I and one other attorney. And we were the only two who did not allow him to pull us out of our character. And he took care of us. And I was just like, I said, God will make your enemy. Your footstool. Foot foot yeah. You know, yeah. right yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. worked out with him. <laughs> you know, so the deal with him. Yes, he healed you. And some it. people, you can just get on with them with the easing of your heart. Mm hmm. They don't they know where you're from. They don't know. It's kind you of know. Cute. It is. So, you know, it's just, I just want to encourage everyone to just, if you can, um, order the book on on Amazon. Because, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm, I can see where it's, the, it's already challenging me, you know, just to think differently. And I appreciate the recommendation, um, Rashika. And, um, you know, it's just really challenging. And in, in the past, I've done like uh, biblical study and stuff. I've done hermeneutics and all that stuff. But this brings it to us in a way that is specific to women. For women. Yeah. And that's a huge difference because, you know, why, why shouldn't we get our own? You know, you just... Yeah. Break it down for us, you know, so we can, yeah. <laughs> Amen. But um, but yeah, but it's it's helpful to anyone, of course. I'm just being silly, but um, <laughs> you know, I, I encourage you, ladies. You know, absolutely purchase this book if you aren't able to purchase it. Let me know. I'll get you. I'll get it for you. Um, and just just so you can get this information, and it may work for you. It may not, but. You know, why not try? I mean, because it's your relationship with God. It's your salvation that's at stake, you know, and why not invest that time and that effort because you're worth it. So, all right. Do we have any prayer requests as we close out? Someone on, um, and it may be a delay. It may be because it's not in the same order, but someone asked from uh, YouTube, what's the name of the book? So we'll say it one more time. Mm -hmm. um, you can show the, if you can show the book again, 
Women of the Word, How to Study the Bible with, ooh, baby, what it? What our else? hearts and minds. Yeah, with our hearts and our minds. I should know it since I'm supposed to teach <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, with, yeah the, with our oh, hearts and minds. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that by Jen Wilkin. Here you go. Here you we, go. Right, right. And we can get it on. Um, um, we got it from Amazon. Um, so hopefully that helps. Um, this is for Archie and Bernita Morish, um, on YouTube. And that was the only question that I saw on YouTube. Um, I would like. Yeah, to YouTube is our, really showing good. Our YouTube. I, I have to. I um, have it on YouTube on here, and I have it on Zoom. And YouTube yes, is really showing it good. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm so glad. And I would like yeah. to um, encourage our YouTube community to hop on to Zoom next month on the last Tuesday of the month so we can engage in a more interactive um, in a more interactive way um, and, and be prepared to show your beautiful faces if you can next <laughs> month as well. Um, these names are cute, but if we could just see your beautiful faces, it would be even better so we can just feel like we're more connected to Mika. Thank you, love. Yes. All, all I had to do was ask. Okay. Hey, y'all. You have not. You have not because. Yes. <clears throat> ask and you shall receive. Hello. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies, so yeah. very much. Did anybody have any final comments? I'm going to hand it back over to you, Nadine, because you know I'll take over something in a minute. Go ahead. Girl, I love you. Girl, you. <laughs> I, oh. I had a quick comment, Nadine, um, when you were talking about, you know, removing ourselves and taking the focus off the other person. It seems to me that every time I have a lesson, it never fails. I go through that lesson for me first. Mm -hmm. And 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 it makes me become um, more transparent and more uh, passionate about the lesson because I've experienced it. And so it's like, not only am I just teaching you what this verse says, I'm also telling you how I had to deal with this situation. <laughs> and I may need to find another verse because <laughs> that one didn't work. But <laughs> that experience, <laughs> I'm being honest, because that oh, experience, it yeah. does, it makes it like real for me. So you're right. Mm -hmm. And the, and the other thing I'm going to say, and you were talking about us waiting for the other person. I had to finally tell God, you know what? I'm going to stop waiting to see you get them. And I'm just going to have my faith that you're going to get them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he already got it, you know. Oh, well, <laughs> well, Y'all, let's pray for Tamika. I, right love, this I love this platform. <laughs> Tamika said what everybody else want to say. Okay. <laughs> That's what everybody else want to do to me, because so you you getting it. <laughs> hey, Pat, that's, Pat. That that's that experience I'm telling you about. I mm -hmm. have to be like, okay, I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna stop waiting on them, but you know, Lord, mm -hmm. it's on you now. Okay, Amen. <laughs> mm -hmm. patiently now, waiting. Now, now look, the I want Nadine. I'm, you may have to do this lesson again and drill it home that we look for because your point, one of your points was that we look to the Bible for solace for ourselves, for our own topics or for whatever. And the whole, the like in her first chapter of the book, like she just hits you right here Ooh. in your forehead and she'd be like, look, it's not about you. It's not about what you're going through. It's not about the other person. It's not even about the other person. It is about me. So like when we read scripture or when we do whatever, it is to search how he moves, how he thinks, not how he can even supply our need or or help, you know, get our brother or our sister off mm. our back. It's mm. not even about that. And when you like she comes out the gate with that and she'll let you she tells you in the book, you're going to be upset. You're going to want to put the book down and <laughs> you you probably will because we, yeah. we have been conditioned subliminally to believe that, you know, the book is for us. It's him talking to us uh, about how to soothe us. And that is not it is for us mm. to see him mm. in every every word. Mm -hmm. So I really encourage you guys to get the book just to, yeah. uh, to be on the same page. 
and to really be able to dialogue. Sister Pat, I know you got something. You know, she she got her notes. Come on, give her some notes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know you got some notes over there. Right. Yeah, I do. I do. But my thing is, I don't have it all together. I was trying to figure out where you were reading at the at the beginning. It's kind of like in the in the almost before the first list. The introduction. I want to say it was there. I don't have my book on me, but it's yeah. I remember reading it. Yeah, Where? I mean, and then too, and then keep keep in mind, keep in mind too, Pat. Um, like I ordered like um, I ordered like a uh, like a another different kind of supplement. Oh, okay. Well, um, and so some of the things that what I was talking about was kind of the from that supplement where she was um summarizing from the book. So it's in the book. I just wasn't reading verbatim from the book. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm um, I was all lost into the to the how to study the Bible. And uh with our whole heart and mind. But we have to put our mind before our heart. Mm -hmm. Because the heart is the steeple. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And I was just saying, you know, in the format of the book, like it's a book and it's a history, but you got to read. For me, I'm I'm doing a, a inductive study in, in, in that's in being an investigator. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm doing line by line study now. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing biblical. I'm going mm -hmm. from Genesis to Revelation. Mm -hmm. but right now, I'm still I'm in Leviticus. That's the book that I, I'm loving that book. I don't know why, but Leviticus is, you know, it, it gives us the history of. Okay. Why 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 things are going the way they're going and how they do what was written the four times is written for our learner, but not everything that was that back there is for us. Mm -hmm. So we got to rightly divide the word. Right. And so that's 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 how I'm getting my part in this book and me looking at it. Yeah. So we're gonna follow the same guidelines that we did uh last year for the study. Yes. Our assignment. Our, our chapter assignments. Yes. yes. Could you post that for us, please? So I, I know I'm studying the right thing. Yes, ma'am. I'll repost it for you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, and with some another thought, um, just another analogy in my brain. But you know how when we go to the Bible for what we need, and it's almost like a mirror, like because you're it's about you. You're looking for what you want versus going to the Bible with like a microscope. Because when you, you know, you have something on a microscope, you know, you have that specimen or whatever it is, and you're really looking at it to try to figure it out, to try to dissect it. It's not about you at all. It's about what's on that microscope slab. And that's in my mind, how, what came to mind when I was reading her book, I was like, you know what? Yeah, that the focus has to change. The focus has to change. So, all right. Um, did everybody who's in here right now um, get to see the video? Yeah. We played a video at the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, no prayer requests. We can go ahead and close it out. Any prayer requests? We'll remember Catherine Nannan, who will have a procedure Thursday. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Pat, this is Sister Karen Brown. Mm -hmm. And I just want the, the continued prayer for me to get well. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that. That's why I don't like coming on camera. I forgot my hair scarf. Oh, Lord Jesus. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. My thing either. No. Okay. I'm in the dark room. I'm in the dark room with Sister. Nobody even noticed until you said it. This is all over the world. This is all over the world. Thank you, man. My hair is not combed. Just pray for the dark. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This platform for 2024 is about to be so interesting. I see this right now. I'm loving it. It really is. 
I'm Me loving too. it. I love it. I'm loving it. Yes. <laughs> Pat, Pat, did you have something? Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just just as real as I'm gonna get, I guess, because it's sure breaking it out. Girl, your cornrows are straight. <laughs> Pray straight. for me and my family and uh, that uh, my grandbaby, because you know I'm still going through with uh, with my um, my grandbaby, her dad. Okay. He was he was turning around now. He's going back two steps or five steps back. So, but just pray that his heart stay open and that she'll be able to come. And go with me for Sunday. Okay. Amen. And her and her mama. Okay. Hey Amen. Ladies, speaking of Sunday, please remember to bring your free field eggs so our babies can hey. have something to uh for the for the Easter extravaganza, please. Thank you. And if you don't want to do eggs, you can go to the app or the website. And you can click on the link and you can donate, make a monetary donation and we'll go and supply the items. So it's up to you. We're making it so convenient so you can take care of those babies. But that's so sweet, Rashika. <laughs> Why she back her eyes? Right. And that's all I have, ladies. I really love you guys. I enjoyed y'all. Enjoyed this tonight, Nadine. Oh my god! Because we can sit on here for another three hours. Oh my god! <laughs> and no, it was really nice tonight. We need to do a, a Bible class lunch. I say it was really nice tonight. I enjoyed yes, it. Yes, thank you, thank you, Sister Brown. Was, oh. Thank you, Nadine. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for your participation. We did it. Oh, yeah, all of us. Okay. And another thing, I didn't show okay. my picture because I don't want nobody to see me in the facility. It's okay, <laughs> Sister Brown. We we just we just glad you on here. Mm -hmm. Glad you on here. We appreciate everybody that was able mm -hmm. to get on. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome, Sister Brown. Wanna... Roshika, you want to close us out? I can. Yes. <clears throat> Father in heaven, first of all, we come to you thanking you for this day, Father, that was not promised to us, Father. We thank you so much for your grace and for your mercy that you've extended to us, that you renew, that's fresh today, that we sometimes take for granted, Father. I just ask that you forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings, Father, and just continue to love on us and steer us in the way that would be pleasing to you. I come on behalf of those who have stood in need of prayer, Father. Um, I'm asking that you would be with those who had prayer requests, Father, and those that made their requests known in their heart, Father. Just be with all of us um, in the way that you see fit, Father. Things that are not in line with your will, Father, help us to ask for things and to seek things and ways to be pleasing to you that are in, in line with your will and not our own desires, Father. I uh, pray for this Bible class. Father, I just thank you so much for the ladies that have been represented here, the, the, the families that they represent. Father, I ask that you would touch their health, touch their finances, touch their uh, their individual families. Father, be with them at the uh, mm -hmm. hurdles and struggles that they're all going through, Father, because we are all going through something. Mm -hmm. But I ask that you would keep our focus on you. Um, Father, and just continue to be with us and bless our relationship with you, Father, yes. and just continue to love on us, strengthen us, and guide us, and we'll continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that you so richly deserve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. Amen. Everybody be safe. Good night, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night Sister Ben. Sister Ben. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Great good night. job, Nadine. Good. good night, everybody. <laughs> Sister Z, everybody. Sister Harris, good night. All right. Good night, Marilyn. I'm cutting it off. Right. Don't say good night to anybody else. <laughs>